So let's get started at the beginning. Uh, it starts when Boyd is 17 years old. He's a senior in, uh, in high school at Allendale, North Dakota, and the Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor. In early November, Admiral Yamamoto, designer of the Pearl Harbor attack, orders his striking force to advance into Hawaiian waters and upon the very opening of hostilities, attack the main force of the United States fleet. Sunny, relaxed, peaceful. At an army radar station, a private practices as he waits for the breakfast truck. He picks up planes approaching from the north and tracks them for a few minutes before reporting to Air Force Headquarters, Hickam Field. But the planes are thought to be American. Ten minutes to eight. December 7th. 50 minutes, the Japanese have sunk or shattered eight battleships. Oklahoma, West Virginia. I was still in high school. I went to the movie that day. We had movies, California, Sunday movie, matinee. And coming home, I remember uh, Maryland, coming out of the movie. I, I remember that day distinctly. Three cruisers and three destroyers, and four smaller ships are sunk or battered. up and listened and we were all, uh, yeah, I'll never forget today, uh, December 7th, yeah. 188 planes and most of their hangars demolished. One thousand one hundred and seventy-eight men wounded. Sixty-eight civilians dead. One hundred and nine marines dead. 218 soldiers dead, 2,008 sailors dead. Oh, I wanted to join ever since the uh, war started and uh, I was still in high school. I wanted to join then. We were all patriotic then, uh, this is the word, eager, eager to go. In Tokyo, the government loses no time in exploiting the news of Pearl Harbor, Japan's greatest victory. With pride, an autocratic regime informs an amazed population of its newly won prize. Propaganda carries on where the bombers left off. Japan's mission is being fulfilled. The eight corners of the world will be under one roof. The militarists have kept their promise. They have demonstrated the power of the Japanese Empire. They have done the impossible. Sunk the United States Navy. The 
United States of America organizes her land, her resources, her industry, her men to answer the distant prayers. In the greatest mobilization of strength ever known to the world, America prepares to rescue the world. 1942. I was 17. finished high school and went on the bum for a little bit and was hiking around and ended up in Montana and joined the Navy. I joined the Navy I went to uh, a boot camp in uh, Great Lakes, Illinois. They ran us through real fast then. Three weeks, and it was long enough to get our shots, fire the rifle. When I was in boot camp, I joined the uh, Great Lakes Choir. But we only lasted three weeks there, and then they sent us to uh, radio school. Went to radio school in Bedford Springs, Pennsylvania, three, four months. The, you learned, uh, it was Morse code then, da 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 dit da 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 Eric, dit da da dit da 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 So it, it, I still got it. Part of my boot camp was uh, assigned, I went to radio school, and they were assigned to a cruiser, which was shortly afterwards sunk. With most, uh, with many, many of the guys that I was in boot camp, it was only then that I uh, figured out that this was a uh, uh, hazardous to my health, as they say in a cigarette. <laughs> That's the first time it really dawned on me that, because uh, here I was in radio school and. Uh, and the, 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 the rest of the guys I'd been with are gone, were gone, yeah. And from there, well, they put me in amphibious forces. And from there I went down to uh, Norfolk or Virginia Beach, Camp Bradford, and uh, was with the 5th Beach Battalion where we learned how to be a beach party. We practiced landings on, uh, uh, and then went down to Florida for more training, and then back to Virginia, or back to Camp Bradford which is now no more. And uh, we learned our trade, uh, how, 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 to, how to get off, how to land, uh, run the beaches. And that was my uh, trade during, and then they'd take a beach party, a platoon, and uh, put each platoon on a ship, a different ship, and then we would, uh, our, our job was uh, the beaches, and the amphibious, amphibious forces. Boyd was stationed on board the USS Warren, APA-53. Most of the crew, including Boyd, were on their first ever tour of duty, and they were headed into action. These words are written in the history of the Warren. The promise of action against the enemy in the near future was assured, since the Warren was an attack transport. Boyd's ship was designed to carry troops and supplies into the attacks on Japanese-held islands. As soon as the Warren left port, it had to sail down the Atlantic coast where German submarines were firing torpedoes, sinking American ships. The sonar man seeks the underwater echo that will betray the sub's position. But the battle-wise German seamen know what to do. Submerge. Head for the bottom. Cut the engines. Sweat out the depth charges. Our first uh, stop was uh, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. We saw them dropping depth charges, and it just dawned on me the other day uh, that they weren't practicing. You know, it was uh, uh, we, uh, we should watch on uh, these little gun tubs, and uh, we didn't know what we were doing. We were just brand new in the ship, and they were uh, these destroyers were dropping these uh, depth charges, and uh, uh, we, you know, fine. And just dawned on me the other day uh, after I'm 76. It just dawned on me, they weren't practicing. There must have been something there. 
went on up to uh, San Pedro, San Diego, San Pedro, I think it was. There we trained with the 4th Marines Division and, uh, you know, practiced and then we uh, were shipped out for our first combat uh, from uh, there. The ocean lifeline to the South Pacific is the war's longest and the war's most tenuous. Stretching 6,540 miles from California to New Zealand, it ties Australia to the United States. Break this line, stop the ships, and Australasia and Asia will be forever Japanese. is war, and the task force speeds steadily toward the target, into battle. The islands to be seized are part of Micronesia, the tiny islands. Kwajalein. We were, I think, the first Japanese land. That was our first combat, right? Kwajalein. January 31st, 1944. The USS Warren's first combat action was at Kwajalein Atoll. Kwajalein was part of the Marshall Island Group. It was fortified with Japanese. Boyd's beach party and the combat troops were the first to go in to capture and secure the northern islands called Ivan and Jacob. Boyd landed on Jacob with the Marines. These two islands needed to be captured first because between them the ocean was deep enough for the naval fleet to sail through. Just to the north were heavily fortified Roy and Namur, to the south, Kwajalein. The carrier planes go in to bomb and strafe the target, and the ships unleash arsenals of shell fire at Kwajalein and any weak talk, at Majuro, at Roy, and at Namur. Sailors prepare the way for soldiers and marines. <laughs> There's two little islands. They were codenamed Ivan and Jacob, and a, 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 a atoll is kind of like a the horseshoe, and these were the gates. Well, our ship we took one of the little islands, and so we went in before the fleet and the rest of the guys came in. Uh, we took this one little island, and like it says, the uh, casualties were light. And ta 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 ta. But Japanese resistance makes an inferno of every beachhead, a hell of every shoreline. American That's the first time anybody ever shot at me, and uh, we I hit the beach. There was a pile of rocks, and I had a, a he was called the beach master, and he hollered at me. But I went and hit behind those rocks, and some snipers were shooting at us. And I just was, I hit behind those rocks. And then uh, uh, he hollered at me to come and I was more scared of him than I was the snipers. And here's one of the biggest things of uh, my career. career. A sight that nobody has ever seen, uh, or very few people have ever seen. We had the two little islands, right? And the battle fleet, we had the airplanes of course going over, uh, the dive bombers and so forth. But the whole battle fleet, and the whole works sailed by us in, you know, into the atoll. It was like breathtaking. You've never seen it. It was power. Like uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. They weren't on parade, you know, for the for uh, Labor Day or something like that. They were going to war. They were. They were. It was awesome. It 
sends a thrill down my uh, 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 spine even now. To see the to uh, you'll never see the, the battle fleet will never uh, sail again because you know, atomic war and we've changed war, but uh, with uh, uh, cruisers and battleships and the whole smear. Tarama, Quadri, any we talk, war. Any we talk, victory. We shot the guy out of a tree, one of the snipers, and a little later on I went over and I picked up some souvenirs. Soldiers often gathered souvenirs from the Japanese soldiers. Boyd took this diary. It belonged to a Japanese soldier who wrote that he had, quote, participated in the attack on Hawaii. Boyd also brought home other souvenirs. I washed the hat up, blood out of the hat, and stuck it in with my souvenirs, and I kept it in my basement for years. And the other day, uh, I said, that's gruesome, awesome, uh, dumb, and I, I threw it away. The conquest of Micronesia. And the last thing I saw was we sailed off into the and there's the smoke was coming up from Quadzling. And uh, I had a little diary then, which long gone. Drew a little picture of the smoke, and, uh, and that was it. Yeah. Now we were ready to smash a 